Wonderful. Now we're here to speak about Europe. Yes. And you told me your first country that you landed in in Europe was Italy. Did you experience any culture shock when you got over um, the European side? Uh, yes, completely. Especially since that English is not the first language. Uh, in Italy, obviously, it's Italian. Uh, I had done Italian for a couple of months leading up to my trip. Oh, you're so prepared. Look, I never it, did it was, it was the <laughs> ciao. Prego. Uh, come stai. Yeah. <laughs> it was the simple phrases. Um, and look, having missed a train and then losing luggage, there, there wasn't much I could do. Did you lose that whole piece of luggage? Oh, it got lost in the train. Eventually, and the train came back and we, and we sorted it out. <laughs> and so I didn't lose it completely, but yes. it was missing for a substantial amount of mm -hmm. time. Um, so if, if you are going to another country, I would say learn the phrases that are helpful. So, hello, how are you, um, please, thank you. Where's the bathroom? Where's the bathroom? Can you help with? Mm -hmm. Can I have a coffee? Yes, or a beer. Or a beer. Depending on the time of day. <laughs> exactly. Like if you're in Germany, beer, breakfast. Yeah. Uh, beer is cheaper one in than the same. water in Germany. Exactly. In, in um, Prague as well, mm. in the Czech Republic, cheaper than water. And you can get it at McDonald's. I didn't say that. These, these are all <laughs> tips. <laughs> use it, don't use it. <laughs> okay, um, what was your most memorable experience in Europe? Mm. That's a hard question. That is such a I hard know. question. Um, I was privileged enough to do a Contiki mm -hmm. uh, about two years ago, and we traveled through seven European countries in 11 days. So we were, it was a whirlwind trip. And you spend a day, two days in every place, and that's quite mm -hmm. phenomenal. Um, but it is quite hectic. Your schedule is go, jam go, go. Yeah. Totally jam-packed. Um, we were in Austria in a little town called Innsbruck. And that for me was quite unsuspecting. It was beautiful, small, student, a feeling you've got the Alps in the background. You know, It's very cosmopolitan, even though it's quite small. That for me was, uh, it was just beautiful. It was yeah. unexpectedly beautiful. Um, obviously, I'd spent quite a bit of time in Italy. Mm -hmm. um, Florence and Tuscany was one of my favorite places. I love Florence. It, it, everything about it, the it's culture, the people. The, I was there during the Mediterranean summer, so the weather was gorgeous. Yeah. You know, walking down the street, the people are just good looking. You're just like, can everybody's can just, good looking. Everybody's good looking. I know. And everybody's well dressed mm -hmm. and well groomed, and uh, there was a lot of fun. Um, and in Madrid. Wow. That's probably one of I've mine. never been to Madrid. Oh, it's beautiful. Really? It's, it's this combination of old and new and cosmopolitan, yet, you know, the, the traditional. Mm. Um, and then they've got in the evening something that they call Movida, which is the nightlife. And people are kind of on the streets dancing the salsa. And, it you know, amazing. the coffee shops are spewing into the streets as well. It's beautiful. Now, tell me about the Contiki tours. What kind of person would go on a Contiki tour? I it would sounds say crazy. Oh, it, it's completely it crazy. It sounds like a lot it's completely crazy <laughs> so contiki's are geared specifically for 18 to 35 year olds okay. so if you've just finished high school and you're wanting to do something different often Europe is that destination that people go to either while they're at high school they'll go on a Euro trip mm -hmm. or they'll go on a tiki contiki straight after high school mm -hmm. or maybe they'll go backpacking after university yeah. contiki is perfect because it's a guided tour you get to see all of the big stops. So you go through Paris, you see the Eiffel Tower, and you get to climb up it if you want. You go through to Rome. But not physically. Well, <laughs> not, 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 not like this. But you, I mean, can <laughs> you can climb up the, you know, the stairs, go up the escalator, there's that. Yes. Not quite. I suppose if you wanted to, if you were quite daring, there is that option. We have to speak about to the Parisian officials. Um, if you're in Rome and Italy, you've obviously got the Colosseum. Mm -hmm. um, if you go over to Spain, Barcelona, there is the La Sagrada Familia, the beautiful Gaudi Church. Um, and it, it takes you through all the big hot spots, the iconic places. Yeah. And I think for that reason, Contique is just perfect. And also, you navigate in countries where English isn't necessarily the first language. Right. And to have someone there who is your tour guide, who understands those countries, who understands those languages, who understands the culture and the practices in those places is perfect. Um, so first contact with a country, I, I would say Contiki is a brilliant, brilliant idea. Um, also, you with people your own age, you with your peers, it's party of all 101. It sounds like a big party, a big awesome party. And <laughs> Contiki organizes specific places for you to go to, mm -hmm. um, be it wine tasting in Sengoa in the Rhine Valley in Germany, um, or I don't know, picnicking under the Eiffel Tower, yeah. Tower if you wanted to, or if you're in Switzerland, they'll take you through to you know the best place to buy that Swiss Army knife. So you get to visit those spots as well, and I think it's probably one of the better things to do your first contact with Europe. Mm -hmm. 
the next time you go, then you could do it you know, with friends or with the family or by yourself. But first contact with the country, Kantiki is definitely your way to go.